recording audience and James. James and audience, you probably noticed something a little bit different about me today. And it may be that I'm not wearing my glasses. And I always wear my glasses. Now, the audience may not realize this, but, you know, we really don't run by the seat of our pants. We have flow sheets that are normally up on the screen that I have to wear my glasses to see. But today's episode is a freestyle, which is more of a conversation, free flowing, and I'm not going to break dance. And so that's kind of, I just wanted to set the stage for that. And then another thing I got to tell you, James, at an industry event recently, somebody was inquiring about us and they referred to us as, ready for this, the coffee guys. Oh man, I like that. We watched the coffee guys and I'm like, I like that. So I'm going to have to look into that rebrand. That's a good idea. The coffee guys. Yeah. Yeah. How are you today, sir? Well, that's been one of our threes or tens of fans out there. I think it was number seven. Seven. Yeah. Hi, Becky. No. Uh, Hey, everybody. Uh, Welcome to the show today. Um, Yeah, it's a freestyle episode. We started these a couple of months back uh, in the summer as we started to kind of roll into travel season, as we kind of call it. Uh, We thought, you know, it'd be nice to to have something we'd touch base with uh, each month and kind of look ahead at what's coming up and then cover all the things in between because now as we move to this new recording schedule, you know, um, it gives us a little more flexibility to be able to drop those in when we want. So yeah, it's pretty, I like the freestyle episodes. They're one of my sleeper favorites, you know, no offense to our guests, but when Jim and I get to just hang out with ourselves, we like that too. (laughs) It's weird like that. (laughs) James, you know, at the end of the last freestyle, we were talking about summer vacations and getting away. And that kind of uh, also builds on we did the uh, seven habits series over the time. And one of them was sharpening the saw. Yep. And I know at the uh, at the last freestyle, we we're talking about the need to sharpen the saw, get away. And I am proud to say that we both went on some summer vacations. And I am going to ask mm-hmm. you. I assume yours was calm, smooth, no issues whatsoever. It was, was, uh, first of all, they're not called vacations when you have kids. They're called trips. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Just for clarification, uh, vacations have a totally different feel and vibe when you don't have to worry about kids. So this was a trip that we went on, family trip. We did, uh, we headed over to Florida, uh, your home state, as you know, uh, not too far, kind of in that uh, Tampa Bay area. Uh, mm-hmm. What is it? Is it Anna Maria? I always get it wrong. Anna Maria Island uh, yep. there outside of Tampa. So uh, we had a great time. We, we road tripped it. We didn't fly, uh, which we're, we're big. We like road trips as a family. We make them a little bit longer than they need to be and enjoy that time on the road and stopping and, you know, letting the kids experience kind of America. Yeah. And, um, so we took the long way down, which was really cool. We ended up going like uh, just kind of straight across a pie uh, to from all the way through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, you know, all the way across. And we ended up staying in Montgomery. Uh, so we got to do Selma to Montgomery. We, we got to see, you know, all the history of Montgomery, which is amazing. Um, experience that. And, it, you know, I haven't traveled a lot in a car cross country since the pandemic. Right. And it's funny how it changes the way you look at everything now, you know, those restrooms that you used before just aren't as attractive. Right. So they weren't uh, attractive in the past. I know they were, but it's, it's wild what, what we were accustomed to, but uh, you know, it took a little bit to kind of get in the swing of things, but we dropped down from there uh, straight down to Anna Maria and um, really we're excited. Got on the beach the first day, you know, just right as we got into town late that night and ran down and we were so pumped to get there. Next morning, we went out to the beach, got everything unloaded, went to go drag it all down there. I mean, this is at nine, 10 in the morning. You were got going, you were ready. Every, we, man, we were pumped. We're going to spend the whole day, you know, set up camp. You know how it is Yeah. Uh, when you're going to have that big beach day and uh, got everything out of the car and turned around and tweaked my back. Uh, minute one we were there and I mean to the point where I laid down in the back of the Explorer and contemplated my life choices for a while uh, you know while I sweated 
Um, but it was, uh, it definitely put a twist on things pretty quick, uh, as you can imagine. Luckily, we were somewhere like with an ocean that I could float in. Uh, so once I kind of got somewhere and got still, you know, I could live. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was, it was pretty bad. I won't lie, but um, wild stories to go with that for another day. But uh, wait, 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 wait. I just got to share. <laughs> you went to a chiropractor and they sprayed you down with disinfectant before you walked in. We'll follow up on that Florida story. Florida stuff. That, yeah, that seemed like that, a story. Yeah, it seems like a story Jim would tell at the beginning um, of one of these episodes. But wild stories on that we'll have to go into or catch yeah. me out. Catch me out in the industry this year and we'll talk about it. Uh, but uh, so we get you know we muscle through it but it was bad man i mean you know how it is when you're down on your back you're, you had the same issue so um powered through it the best we could uh, we had a snorkeling and kind of um, dolphin tour in the bay um and we we did that i think it was maybe midweek and uh you know i was actually kind of concerned for myself with a bad back you know how it is on a boat just hitting waves and stuff but it yep. actually i i you know i enjoyed it but we got to our last uh, um, kind of place. The snorkeling wasn't very good. The, it was really rough that day and stuff. So they were like, you know, but looking for shells and stuff, sand dollars, that that was something the kids did, which was cool. Uh, so we got to the place where we were going to get out and kind of wait around, and, you know, snorkel, if you will, and uh, got out of the boat. Kids got out of the boat. They started looking around. My wife went to get out of the boat. First step off the boat impelled her foot with the uh, oh. A shell and i mean to the point where she picked it up pulled it out ow uh, that ended that uh, moment so she ended up back on the boat uh getting some first aid um while you know we tried to salvage what we could with the kids and anyway luckily it was at the end of that but that ended up at the at urgent care in the middle of a pandemic in florida uh my wife had to do that alone and get a tetanus oh. shot and get you know those shots in the bottom of your foot that they do oh gosh uh, yeah. because you know you can imagine how they had to clean that so yeah. she left that on crutches and we had one day until we had to head home and remember i told you we love road trips so we make them longer um it was going to be quite the haul coming back and she was on crutches and i had a bad back and uh we made the best of it we did what we could um to and the kids were just champions the whole time Good. I'd love to say that it was one of those vacations where we really recharged, but it really wasn't. That but doesn't I will sound say, like it. I will say we filled our bucket. I mean, for sure. I mean, there were so many moments I told everybody, my son and daughter had never ate at a Waffle House before. Um, we took them to a Waffle House and they thought it was the greatest moments of their life. In uh, Montgomery? I've been uh, to the one in Montgomery. I really can't remember where we were. When, it might have been. There's 74 of them in Montgomery. Yeah. But, um, and then we, you know, we, we traveled through Alabama. I forget where exactly we were, but it's, it's like one of the peanut capitals. You know, there's a lot of peanuts grown in the uh, yeah. lower half of Alabama. And um, there's this, we're just driving down the road, down the highway, and there's this giant, probably 40 foot peanut. And my son is a peanut fan, man. I mean, He'd rather have that than anything. So we, you know, kind of skidded in there and took a picture with it. And it kind of set a tone and a lot of uh, just little things that happened that were amazing. And uh, we stole as much time as we could. That's awesome, man. That's How about awesome. you, man? We, time? well, thank the Lord. It wasn't as invigorating as yours. We went up to the Chattahoochee National Forest in Northern Georgia. So it's, way up there near the Tennessee South and North Carolina borders, rented a beautiful little secluded cabin on the side of a mountain with a creek running. There was a deck off the back and a creek ran by it. Nice. So Tammy and I took the grandkids or well, we, combined, we have a tribe, right? So two of uh, her grandkids, the little ones, uh, Wyatt and Riley, we took up there for them to get that experience. They haven't done it. And we did ATV riding in the mountains, horseback riding in the mountains. We panned for gold. Awesome. We, we tubed down that little creek behind us, got tubes or there was tubes there for the kids and uh, ate some great food. And, you know, just literally, well, I, I'll be honest, you know, Tam and I would go out on the deck in the morning first thing and we they had a Keurig machine there. 
and we'd have coffee and uh it was so good we got back and we have coffee machines here and espressos and all that we actually bought a keurig last week because we liked that experience and it just kind of so but now we have our our coffee wow. repertoire and arsenal is building but anyways we had a great time uh everything so was fine you know we got rest we uh we enjoy God's beauty. We listen to the trees. We were in an area that had a lot of black bears there, though. And so 600 and some odd registered black bears in that area. So they're like, you know, don't leave food out at night. And we're thinking, ah, oh, not a big deal. But we didn't see any. But we were on vigilance with that. But we had a great time. It was really good. You know, it was uh, one of those where I actually felt like I got away. You know, it wasn't a... Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the other part, the best part was no or very limited cell slash Wi-Fi service, very intermittent. So when I said I'm going off the grid, I felt yeah. comfortable doing that because it wasn't like I could just put the phone down and not look at it. I could put the phone down and knowing oh, there's no service. So yeah, I, I, could. I can do. Yeah. 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 So it was good, man. It was great. Yeah. And Absolutely. I, I want to clarify. I don't want to put a damper on on my vacation it just wasn't one of those recharge ones because i i told a bunch of people while we were gone the experience we experienced as a family i, I mean it it showed the character of our family just you know yeah. my son helping out because he knew one of us were down or um, yeah yeah i have those conversations I'm, I'm telling you you can read in books and you can you know, watch videos and do all the things, but being able to drive like Selma to Montgomery and tell the, yeah. that type yeah. of story yeah, and, and be in Montgomery and stand on the corner where Rosa Parks did and, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and walk the same streets as Hank Williams did, you know, like those types yeah. of things, you can't steal that. And so I'll yeah. take that. Um, you know, we're over our pains and our ailments for the most part, other than just being old. So uh, we powered through it. But Jimmy, I'm, I'm, ex I'll tell you, I'm happy we did that because yep. the, the, the reality of it, and I think it became even more reality this past couple of weeks, um, is that we're smack dab still in the middle, you know, yeah. somewhere in the middle of this pandemic. And yep. was, I think we had, I don't want to say false hope because there is definitely events happening, but it's nothing like we thought perhaps this fall was going to be or hoped it would be um there I, I will say that i traveled this past week to uh put on my other hat my hr hat they're gonna yep. get mad at me for calling it my other hat but they know what i mean yeah. uh, put on my hr hat and went to a conference actually in las vegas yeah and um you know it was, what was it how did it feel it, you know it, it was neat to be out there yep um you know, there's an element that you just don't even know how much you've missed it. But for yeah. some of us, some definitely do. Yeah. Um, but that you can't really explain to someone. But then also it was odd, you know. Yeah. Um, they're 100% mask mandate there too. So like, you know, following that. And, and they were very diligent. I will say that. I felt safe in at the conference. There was tons of social distancing. They definitely booked a bigger venue than they needed on purpose. Yep. You know, there were a lot of elements to it that I felt really good about, but Vegas is Vegas, man. Yeah. Now, oh, I, yeah. If it would have been in, uh, you know, Kentucky or, or in Florida or, you know, just your run of the mill conference. I know Las Vegas is the conference king, but it was a weird place to be. And yeah. um, so uh, one of the things that happened while we were there is we made the decision to go back to restrictions for our own company which yep. is a funny thing to kind of make while you're at an HR convention in Vegas. Right. Yeah. But, but we, we acted pretty quick on that. Uh, we've yep. seen the uptick, you know, in cases and then in, in some areas that our people um, reside a shortage in beds and things like that. And the last thing we want to do is, is put, you know, our people in harm's way. Our vision is make the world a safe place to work. And we can't do that if our people aren't safe. And so it starts with our people and, and so we made that tough choice this week. And, and, you know, there was some other news that came out, Jimmy, like AGAs, you know, kind of showing their cards a little bit on what their event's going to look like and, and yeah. offering some flexibility to pretty much everyone to say, look, here's, here's what we're going to have to do to be safe. 
And honestly, if you're not okay with it, or if it's not the right time, then we'll work with you to make it right. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think we'll see that a lot uh, moving forward. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of us were, what's the word, you know, hope, hopefully optimistic. Cautiously going, optimistic. Oh, probably. Cautious, yeah, there you go. And it, it's all of a sudden late August, September, and all of a sudden things are raging again. And then we start getting words of operators, you know, res- having travel restrictions right. and they're not trying to be mean. I mean, everybody's it's, it's like they want their people to be safe. So some operators have said, our stance is we would prefer everybody to be safe. If you feel like going, okay, take precautions. Absolutely. Others, you know, others have said, no, we're just going to say no travel, no meetings, no nothing. So it's been all over the board. So people like the AGA, uh, SGA is coming up in Charlotte, uh, mm-hmm. a big LGA event in New Orleans, uh, the first week of November, that's a 192-195 event, yep. which I've gone to for 11, 12 years now, which is huge. Um, and they just got hit with Ida. So, I mean, it's like a double whammy for our, yep. our New Orleans friends and our South Louisiana friends. So, I mean, ho- thoughts and prayers to everyone. And yeah, so there's I a lot going on out there. There is um, a lot to consider. And, and I think that's where we took our approach as a company was we said, let's start with each person because look, you, you guys know, we can't please in this situation. It's almost split 50 50 for most people, you know, some yeah. people feel some kind of way and some people feel the other and, and whatever decision we make, you know, we're going to probably piss off another group and vice versa. Right. And I mean, that's reality and we understand it. So instead of throwing a blanket on it, we're taking a more kind of human approach to it. And, you know, like you said, gauging that comfort level, because some of us that travel more and, you know, understand the restrictions that are in place and, you know, are comfortable with that, then we want to, we, we, in order for us to make the world a safer place to work, we have to be out there working with y'all. Everyone, yeah. right? The industry, the associations, the clients, the prospects, everyone. And that that takes, you know, the right people. And so that's really been our approach. And and Jimmy, I hate to kind of, it, for it to feel like speaking out of both sides of our mouth a little bit, but, you know, you and I are both ones that are, are having to go, not having to, but are going out and traveling. We are comfortable. We will be at these big events. Um, we are. Um, we're being safe about it, obviously, but this past month, really, we kicked off some of that. You know, I talked about Vegas. You, I know you were in KC for an event. Um, yeah, for a NACE event. For wonderful NACE. event. 300 yep. some people there, I would say. Right. I mean, very robust. It was great seeing folks. Yeah. And, you know, me being a, 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 my past before COVID, I would travel what, James? 25. Half, I mean, we, well, yeah, yeah. I'm saying event specific, but time wise, okay. I mean, you're, yeah, you're spending, you spend a lot of time on the road. And I'm, you know, traveling now for me being, I would call myself a, a veteran experienced traveler. I'm like, you know, I yeah. have hand sanitizers <laughs> everywhere. I got masks. I've got, you know. I didn't know what to expect when I got to the airport this time. It had been so long. It seemed like, you know, I traveled up to uh, Oklahoma City. I, I think we talked about it at some point, but uh, on 811 day, uh, we yeah. did some things with OK 811. Uh, they brewed a, their own beer that went out uh, in Oklahoma, I think in Oklahoma City, that you can buy. And actually, we sponsored the the price for that. There's a QR code on every can. You can scan it. It'll take you to enter you in. You just answer one question. You know, who do you call? Uh, it's really easy. Call me. I'll give you the answer. Um, or Jim can give it to you now. Who do you call? Uh, 811. Would That's that right. be it? Always. All right. Call before you dig. Um, but if you scan that, it'll take you right to uh, an entry forming in there for an $811 prize that I think is at the end of this month or maybe the beginning of October they're going to give away. Really yeah. cool event, but I got to go out there. It was just for the night, but that yeah. was really my first walking out into the industry since February of 2020. And um, it was so great to see people. Saw Jason Crow, our good friend there. Yep. Friend of the show. Uh, MG uh, Govea. I always say it wrong. I feel like I got that wrong. MG. MG. Uh, he, uh, OG he was there. One, one, the uh, guru. Several people. Uh, Jeff Kaufman uh, from the OGA. Yep. Uh, tons of Nathan, people. Our yep. Nathan. Oh, we brought Nathan. Elsa. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I got to experience that. And like I said, go to Vegas this past week. Uh, so we're getting out there. We're slowly yeah. kind of dipping our toes in the water. I know you got a trip coming up, uh, I think, next week uh, as well. So 
kind yeah, of get, to, getting in a up, little bit into the group. Yeah, I'm going up to uh, see some industry, or oh, I guess you would call them friends, colleagues, some other industry contacts up in New York, New which, York. again, I'm talking not the Manhattan, New York, I'm talking the upstate New York, which I'm really uh, interested to go see that and experience that. And I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, a little bit of travel will be good. Yeah. Well, I, I think if there's a battle cry, Jimmy, it's the, for us, it's kind of the show must go on, right? Uh, we're it has learning. To. It's got to, right? And, and I, I thank the Lord that we are comfortable and prepared to do kind of a virtual experience. Yep. Just almost, I won't say as comfortably as in person, because I think we would all prefer in person if we could. Sure. Um, but we are comfortable enough as me and you. Uh, as a company, uh, as an industry now. Somebody said uh, uh, this morning we had a new hire come in and, and he said, uh, man, my onboarding was really good. His onboarding was 100% virtual, okay? Okay. And uh, he walked, he, he signed up for the job and knew we were going to be, you know, split. And then it changed to 100% virtual. Yeah. And I said, how did it go? And he was like, really good, man. I was really surprised, you know, kind of. And I said, man, we had to get really good at this really fast last year. And I think that that's a statement as a whole for our industry. We had to get really good, really fast at, at the remote version of ourselves. Yeah. And I'm proud of our industry for doing it. And I'm proud of us, honestly, yeah. and you, Jimmy. I'm proud of you, Jimmy. I'm proud of you, James. I'm proud of you for coming up with the idea. It was 17 months ago. I was sitting out in the Tiki Lounge. And I did a uh, video on my phone and I posted it. It was kind of like that pre-traumatic stress disorder <laughs> meeting that, you know, I'm sitting COVID on day four, not, I didn't have it, but the world is shutting down. And I'm yeah. like, I, I normally get on a plane. I normally go to a hotel. I normally run the cars. I normally get on a plane. I did a, and I didn't know what to do. And you gave me that call and said, I got this idea. Yeah. We're going to do a. Uh, uh, what you call it, a podcast, a vlog, or whatever you call blog, it. Blog, like, I think, maybe a video series, something. Yeah, and I'm like, something. you lost your mind. I said, you're crazy. I said, I cannot do that. He goes, yeah, you're going to be great at it. And with the first ones, you go back and look at it. We were so, I was so uncomfortable. I mean, yeah, I, I like little robots, robots, right? Welcome yeah. to Hi, the. I am Jim Shower. Yeah. <laughs> so, but long story short, James, I think there's some information that you and I are both very, I don't want to say proud in a prideful or, you know, in a prideful way, but um, just that we're making some good connections in the industry and people are recognizing that. And as a result, at the SG, give a little uh, clue about the SGA in Charlotte and what's yeah. happening with that. Yeah. So uh, we found out. Uh, I don't know when this is going to air the I mean, next week. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so we found out first part of September. Um, yep. that we actually made the finalist for the corporate communication award at the, for SGA that yep. SGA puts on. And so we had, we had put that out before that, that we were nominated. Um, thank you for those that nominated us. Um, and we apparently got some votes um, from the threes of listeners that we have. Uh, we appreciate that too. We'll send you a check on uh, your swag box. But uh, there was actually a really awesome out, uh, turnout for the SGA Awards. Uh, there's some great stats on it that I don't have in front of me. Um, but they are going to announce the winners. Uh, so it was us. Who was it? One Spire. Guy, Spire. One guest. Yeah, Inspire. I mean, world-class organizations that to have coffee with Jim and James be in the same breath as those entities, sure. it's like, whoa. Yeah, because I, I really respect both of what they're yeah. doing, you know, and both of them had multiple communications that they were, I think, nominated for. And, you know, really, we put this show out from Energy World Net as our, you know, our, I, that's what got nominated. So kind of neat to see that. And Jim, like you said, it's not pride in the sense of, you know, show voting. It's more of just knowing that what you're doing is making an impact and being seen and, and respected. Yeah. Honestly, uh, we, we love SGA and our friends over there and we appreciate everything they do. And, and, um, yeah. man, who's going to win it? Me and Jimmy's going to might show up in a tux that night. It's at the NASCAR hall of fame. Did you not see that? Um, you know what? Have you ever seen the movie dumb and dumber and the tuxedos that they oh, wore? Man. 
Huh? All right. Saying SGA, pull a couple Watch strings, out. we might show up in those those blue and orange suits. Well, we might. Well, you know, and then doing the live event there for them, and you know, all we that are. stuff would be fun. I mean, we really uh, give so much. Um, I don't know, respect to them for respecting us and asking us and trusting us to go ahead and do that uh, live event with the Connections for Life team. Yes, thanks I mean, that's a lot of everyone that trusts us. Yeah. I mean, really, I don't know what you were thinking. And just to know that we're making an impact. And that's really, you know, when people ask why we do this, to connect with you, to share one thing or a couple things that maybe makes your day better, makes your day safer makes you put a smile on your face, something. Mm -hmm. As long as we positively touch people, I, I'll do this until, ready for this, the cows come home. Yeah. Huh? That's a Decatur right. term. Decatur. That, that is a Decatur term. And James, uh, let me switch on this too. Speaking about all that we're doing in the and the, the friends that we have in the network, we got another event coming up uh, really soon here. Yep. Uh, we just uh, actually just recorded a, a, a teaser for it. What, yeah. is our, what is our life anymore, Jim? I, know. I contacted Jim yesterday and I said, hey, man, we got to record some promo spots for some different events. <laughs> and then record an episode. And me and him are both like, what is our life? Uh, yeah. What Jim was referring to, though, is we're doing a LinkedIn Live uh, with Jim, our friend Jim Kunkel yep. uh, and his show Build Out. And yep. if you haven't, you know, check that out, obviously check it out. I bet Ashley will link that up for us here on LinkedIn. And, and if you're on the podcast, go find uh, Jim Kunkel. Really easy. Yeah. Uh, to find Kunkel with a K. Um, so September 15th at noon yep. Eastern time. Uh, Eastern. It's called, we're calling it Super Friends. It's going to be, uh, Jimmy, you want to run it down? You do such a great job of it. Okay. On this event, it's going to be Heidi Brooks, Got it. Mike Lamont, yep. uh, the Connections for Life crew, Three yep. Stooges, Joe Surrett, Ted Pete, Chad Kuvo. James and myself and master of ceremonies, Jim, Jim Kunkel. Kunkel. Yep. Yeah. So there's 67 people on it. Um, <laughs> we're all going to be this big and, and talking over each other. It'll be a blast. Come check us yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, no, it will be cool. We, we've had some great synergy with those folks and we, we yeah. kind of started as a joke. And uh, then we said, you know what? It'd be a great show. Just get on talk about why we do what we do you know, what our intentions are, how we want to move forward and what we can do to, you know, stand our industry up and others. And um, uh, it should be fun. Uh, those it are fun. fun. We don't get to do a lot. I mean, I know these are live, but you know, yeah. the part about live that is the best is when people get on chat and start harassing you and heckling you and, and asking questions and doing all the fun stuff that honestly, yeah. we don't, we don't get to do all the time. It's cool to be on the other side a little bit too. Sometimes uh, we is. don't get to do that a lot. It'll be fun. And I'll probably have my mute button on the whole time. So I don't slip up and say mm -hmm. something live. Uh, it'll be a blast. James, I think uh, our time is coming to an end. My friend, I could go on for hours as we normally could. Uh, any last words before I wind us down? No, man, stay the course. Let's, uh, let's get past all this and get it. I'm, I'm right, man. I hope 22 is, is our year for sure. You know, um, but we're going to be out there. Uh, keep an eye on AGA, SGA. Uh, really, we'll be everywhere, man. Um, we'll, we'll do the best we can to support all of our associations uh, during this time. And uh, when we can't be there, we'll do the best to do what we can. Absolutely. Uh, you spoke every word in my head about that. So thank you. Audience, thanks for tuning in. We hope you had at least an enjoyable time today spending it with us. Um, we hope your day is good. We hope the most important thing is that you all stay safe. So until next time on Coffee with Jim and James, it's our pleasure. We will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks, James. Yeah. Yeah.